Hello everyone, I'm meteorologist Chester Lampkin on Met Service TV. This is a look at your New Zealand forecast on this Friday and as we move into the weekend and it has been a mess across the North Island and parts of the South Island. In the meantime, drought continues for parts of the South Island. Even though we have cloud cover covering the country, just not a lot of hope for those drought stricken areas. Let's talk about what we had rain wise today. All of it on the Westland once again on the South Island and then a band of showers and thunderstorms moving through Northland, Auckland. Hamilton bringing flooding rains once again to those regions. It's been a very wet month so far for parts of the North Island, including Auckland, Hamilton and the Bay of Plenty and then the northern tip of the South Island. But we've stayed dry here in the rest of the South Island, including Canterbury. Now there may be a shower or two heading into tomorrow that may bring a little bit of relief, but not enough to break that drought that has been in place. In addition to the extreme rain and extreme dry weather, we also have warm weather temperatures running one to three degrees above normal for a winter day here on this Friday. We did make it into the 12 to 15 range in the South Island, especially around those drought stricken areas. It's been very warm and windy and temperatures were very warm before the storms hit in Auckland. We made it to 18 today and 20 across parts of the Northland. Let's go to Auckland and talk about what happened today with that batch of rain moved through. You can see that here on our radar. And basically we had showers, thunderstorms for the lunchtime hours into the afternoon, easing now for the evening commute, but the damage has been done. You know, yet another storm has moved through and caused flooding and shut down roads. In fact, coastal flood warnings in effect for the Auckland region. Check out this map showing where the closures have been. Parts of the Northern Motorway again underwater, Tamaki Drive and Northwestern Motorway as well. And the video showing that rain activity it has been a mess with 70 to 90 millimeters of rain having fallen just today alone with these storms, shutting down roads, causing all sorts of problems out there. Take it easy on those area roads. It's been a very wet month so far here in the Yalkin region. Let's go to the South Island. I want to talk about another area of extreme weather and that's been around Canterbury. It's been unusually dry here. We have a low fire risk for the Southern Canterbury, including the Timaru area. We go into Central Canterbury in around Christchurch out towards Ashburton. We have a moderate risk. Kaikoura, a moderate risk, but the high risk continues in Huronui, and that's where we have the Hanmer Springs fire. Several hundred firefighters have been battling this Hamner fire. State Highway 7 once again closed as a result of this fire. We have video from this region of the drought conditions. Farmers are suffering, and we also have the firefighters out there battling those blazes. Three to 500 firefighters fighting that fire in Hanmer Springs. You know, just a year ago, we were talking about extreme rains for this part of New Zealand, and now we're talking about drought and fire. We keep going back and forth between extremes in the weather. More showers for the north, dry in Canterbury, where we need that rain for the weekend. You may get one or two isolated showers, but not enough to break the drought. Dry and sunny and warm for Sunday. In the meantime, showers continue up north, but the flooding rains should ease at least for the upcoming weekend. You can see the forecast anytime, metservice.com. As you have just seen, climate change will increasingly affect our day-to-day -day weather. But we don't have to wait until 2050 to witness its impact. Already today, many parts of the world are experiencing more intense rainfall, floods, storms, heat waves, droughts. We need to minimize these negative impacts, and the best way to do that is to rapidly and significantly reduce our emissions of carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases. We have the power and the responsibility to create a better future for ourselves and for those to come. But we need action at least at two levels. We need a new robust global climate change agreement, and we need local policy that points us toward green growth and action by investors, industry, cities, and regions. Then we can arrive at a stable, climate-neutral future. Let's work together to make our societies safer and more resilient. Please join me in taking action on climate change. Thank you.